What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you the difference between Amazon FBA and selling on eBay. Now I am a Canadian eBay reseller, but in the past I have sold on Amazon FBA as well. And right now I do choose eBay over Amazon, but I am considering going back depending on the inventory that I do have in stock and to see if it is worth it. So I decided to make this video. I think I made one in the past back whenever I was selling on Amazon, but I don't think I did a full breakdown like I am in this video. And of course there is gonna be a few things that I am gonna miss, but I am focusing on the key aspects between the two. So at first, whenever you're first starting out and selling on Amazon FBA, there is a couple items that you are restricted on selling. If you have the Amazon seller app, whether you're doing uh, online retail arbitrage or you're doing retail arbitrage and you're looking for products to sell, you might come across some whenever you scan them that it comes up saying they're restricted. If you click into that, it might tell you that you can get a letter from manufacturer to take the restriction away. That is very, very hard to obtain from my understanding. And over time, the more sales that you generate of things that are unrestricted, you will get a lot of those restrictions lifted over time from my understanding. Now, I never had it go that far. I never stuck with Amazon to get most of those uh, restrictions lifted. I just switched over to eBay shortly after that. I only was on Amazon FBA for maybe five to six months and then I switched over to eBay and solely sold on eBay. Some of the brands and products that you might be restricted on right off the get-go is Marvel, Lego, Barbie, Hot Wheels, basically a lot of these top toy brands and other brands and that will make it very difficult to find products when you're first starting out as well. For eBay, on the other hand, there is hardly any restrictions. There is a few items that are restricted, but they are common knowledge, and I'm not gonna list everything for eBay because there's a lot less restrictions than there were for Amazon FBA. Now, when it comes to shipping, Shipping is why people usually choose Amazon FBA when they're starting out compared to eBay, and I will explain why. So. When it comes to shipping for Amazon FBA, you have to ship your products to an Amazon FBA warehouse. And whenever your product does sell on Amazon, they will ship that item to the customer, not you. So you ship your items to Amazon FBA warehouse, they ship their items to the customers. So that's one less thing that you have to worry about having to make sure your shipments are on time. Amazon FBA, they do uh, take care of that for you guys. Now, whenever you ship your items to the Amazon FBA warehouse, you will get a discount here in Canada. It is through UPS, as long as you're doing the shipment through the Amazon app. Um, what would have cost me $60 to ship, only cost me 30, maybe $35 to ship it with the discounts that Amazon gives with UPS. If you're in another country, it might be a different courier, but here in Canada, it is UPS. Now, the one downfall with this, with Amazon FBA is, whenever it comes time for you to make a shipment to an Amazon FBA warehouse, they might request you to split up the shipments and send to multiple Amazon FBA warehouses, depending on what they ask you to do whenever you're trying to finalize it. For me, I never had that problem. I was able to ship all of my shipments to one warehouse, but I have seen a lot of people, it might ask them to split up two shipments, ship one box to uh, one warehouse and ship another shipment to another Amazon FBA warehouse. That's one thing to remember as well. Now, whenever it comes to eBay, you are responsible for shipping your items directly to the customer. And it has to be within the handling time that you select whenever you're making the listings. So for me right now, I have 10 days. Usually I ship within two days. Soon I might change that. I might switch mine from 10 days to maybe three or four days. But right now I leave it on 10 days just in case something comes up. I still have time to ship that item. As long as you ship within the handling time, you are okay. But with eBay, you are shipping your item when it sells directly to the customer. Now the final key point that I wanted to talk about is the fees. Amazon FBA has way more fees than eBay does and I am gonna break down most of them but there is a lot more than I am listing here for Amazon FBA and I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Now up first, there is two different plans that you can select. There is the individual plan which is $1.49 
per item that you do sell on Amazon. And there is the professional plan, which is $29 a month. So my understanding is if you're selling consistently on Amazon FBA and you're selling more than 20 items per month, you might as well stick with the professional plan because it's gonna save you money. You're only paying $30 a month compared to $1.50 per sale that you do make. If you're selling less than 20 items per month, you might as well stick with the individual plan and only pay $1.50 per item that you do sell. On top of that, there is monthly storage fees, fulfillment fees, there is an FBA label service that is optional, but it is 20 cents per item. So if you're sending your items to Amazon FBA, there is a label that you either have to print and put on yourself or you get Amazon to do it, but they will charge you 20 cents per item that you're shipping them. And it basically covers the barcode. So whenever uh, your item is in their warehouse, they scan it, it comes directly to your store and everything is done like that. So it covers up the barcode that is on the product to an Amazon barcode. So if you do not go and do that yourself, you are charged 20 cents per item and that does add up if you are doing larger shipments. There is an FBA prep service fee, which is also charged per item and that is 50 cents to a dollar per item. Now that is for things and items that should be bubble wrapped, a sticker for a suffocation sticker. So if it is in a clear poly bag, it needs to have a suffocation sticker on it. And poly bags, if required, if you're sending stuff like plush toys, they usually require it to be in a uh, poly bag with the suffocation sticker. So basically if you forget to, or if you just go and make a shipment and you ship it to Amazon FBA, they receive it, but it wasn't shipped and the items aren't how they're supposed to be shipped with, if it's a breakable, it needs to be in bubble wrap. Like I just explained about the plush toys and the poly bags with the suffocation sticker, they will charge you 50 cents to a dollar per item for them to do it. So you do want to make sure that you are, if it, uh, if you are creating a shipment to Amazon FBA, it will tell you that this item needs to have bubble wrap. This item needs to have a suffocation sticker and be in a poly bag. If you don't ship it with those items, the way that it tells you to, you will be charged the 50 cents to a dollar per item to have Amazon FBA employees do it. So do keep that in mind. So when it's all said and done, that is a ton of fees that you do have to pay when you are selling on Amazon FBA. Now, when it comes to fees for eBay, there is the final value fee, which is between 12 to 14%. For most of my items, video games, comics, things like that, it's near the 14% mark. So I usually calculate my fees at 14% to keep it safe. But there also is a promoted listing fee. This one is optional and you select the ad rate percents. And if it sells from the promoted listing, then you have to pay that percentage. So let's say you're using the promoted listing uh, ad rates and you select 5%, whatever your item does sell for, if it does sell via the promoted listing, then you have to pay 5% on the total value of the item. So the item plus what the shipping is, you have to pay the 5% on that, as well as the 14% for the final value fee, and as well as you will have to obviously ship the item to the customer. So keep that in mind. I do that sometimes, but I don't do more than 5% depending on the item. Sometimes paying the 5% fee means that I'll be able to sell it quicker, but it depends on how much I'm selling the item for. I don't do the promoted listings for every item and I don't always do 5%. Sometimes it's only 2%. It depends on the item, depends on how quick I want to move it, and it depends on how much I'm selling the item for. But this is the difference between Amazon FBA and eBay and the fees alone, in my opinion, is one of the main reasons why I decided to switch from Amazon FBA and go to eBay back a couple years ago, because even though I have to ship directly to the customer, I learned how to do that. I learned how to ship things safely, on time, accurately, uh, and, and how easy it was. It's so easy to ship on eBay, ship directly to the customer, and that is my go-to right now. Even on Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji, if somebody wants something shipped, I can ship Canada-wide, all across the United States as well. Usually people just pay me the shipping, or I do also offer shipping discounts if I sold that way. If it's on eBay, it's super easy to ship as well. So, when you're starting out, seeing the FBA label service, whenever they're putting the labels on your items for you, 
that is very appealing. Whenever you see that there is the shipping advantage, so you ship directly to Amazon FBA, but when the item sells, they ship it to your customer, that is appealing. But at the end of the day, the fees alone on Amazon is way high than it is on eBay. I'd rather take control and take control of my shipments and have to ship my things on my own now, rather than leave it up to Amazon and have to pay those outstanding fees. Unless you are selling a ton a month, the fees versus what you sell does outweigh it. So if you're selling a ton a month, you might want to do Amazon FBA, but for me, I'm selling average on month. I would much rather do eBay right now. If my sales per month do go up quite a bit, I might have to debate on which one I want to do, but Amazon to me is easier starting out, but the fees do add up, and eBay to me is way easier because you're in control and you are handling everything on your own, and if there's a mistake, it's not an Amazon FBA employee, it's solely on you. So you do have to take responsibility if you do make a mistake. But I hope you guys did like this video, sharing the difference between Amazon FBA and eBay, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care, peace.